Every once in a while, a revolutionary new drinking food comes along that changes everything. In 1964, Anchor Bar introduced the Buffalo Wing. And it didn't just change dive bar bar snacks. It changed how North America ate spicy food. In 2004, David Chang created the roast pork belly guabao. And it didn't just change hipster craft beer beer joints. It changed how people conceptualized the sandwich. Well, today, in 2024, we're introducing the next revolutionary recipe of this class. And we're calling it Xiang La Cui La Ji, Chili Crisp Spicy Chicken. But before we get into it, we do need to talk about the original La Ji because it is a great dish. I mean, you're sitting there, hot summer day, cold bottle of snow, sifting through a mountain of chilies and gnawing on some bone-in chicken bits. It's one of the world's great drinking foods. So then, what's the problem? Well, the problem is this. If you have people that aren't used to Chinese food, they are going to struggle with a Lazaji user eating experience. So you can find a couple different flavors of international adaptation in Japan, in karagi form on a hot plate, America as chicken wings, the usual suspects. But the issue with these spicy chickens is that they're not that spicy, and they're not even that easy to eat. Well, today, we're introducing a lozaji that's very spicy and very easy to eat. Now, to solve this adaptation problem, though, what we needed to do was redesign lozaji from the ground up, starting with the chilies. Because in most versions of Chinese lozaji, you can't eat the chilies. I mean, you can, but it's not exactly advised. But they are super important for flavor. So what we did is we went back to the fundamental level, the original lozaji in Gulishan. In that 1980s version, you can see a bit of a different approach. Chilies that are deep fried until crisp and then chicken deep fried till dry and almost jerky-like in that very same oil. After repeated frying, that oil is going to become comically spicy. And because it's deep fried, it means that you can eat those chilies, though most people don't, it's still not exactly balanced for it. But for a home cook in the West, even that version doesn't really work, right? I mean, come on. Deep frying a whole mountain of chili peppers just to flavor some oil, maybe munch on one or two, it's kind of hard to justify. I mean, they might be living fat and happy over there in communist China, but in late-stage capitalist America, we can barely afford groceries. But what if we flip this on its head? What if we made the chilies the star of the show? And well, that's exactly what we did because we only need to look so far as the neighboring Guizhou province. There, you can find a snack called Xiang La Cui, sesame-stuffed crunchy deep-fried chilies, immortalized into the English language as chili crisp, when Lao Gama brilliantly added some to their condiment. Unfortunately, if you just stir-fry a chicken with some chili crisps, it's not gonna be spicy enough. Trust us, we tried. But what if we used that Gulashan technique? What if we deep fried our chili chips till they're crisp, use that to deep fry our chicken to a jerky, and then made a spicy stir fry with it all? Xiang La Cui, La Ziji. One dish. You can eat the chilies. You can eat it with chopsticks. You can eat it with a spoon. You can eat it with your hands as a bar snack. It keeps for days. It's spicy. It's flavorful. But don't wait for the chef at your local bar to watch this video, because those that are truly serious about eating need to make their own food. So, to get started with our chili crisp spicy chicken, you're going to need some chilies. This here was 200 grams of a spicy red dried chili. Don't obsess about the cultivar too much. Obsess more about the quality. You'll want a chili that's medium to hot and ideally still a bit pliable. This sort of fresher dried chili will keep their color better during the frying process. In China, Xianjiao or Argentiao would be nice, Chaotianjiao if you want a bit more kick. Abroad, Guahius or Tianjins would hit similar places. Just slice the chilies on a bias into one inch sections. The bias helps the filling stay in the chili, 
and do so in this manner if you're working from something larger like a argincao or a guajillo. Give them a jiggle and a spider to get out some of the seeds, then soak them with hot boiled water for about a half an hour. Then, after that time, transfer them to a strainer and let the water drain off for about 30 minutes or so. Then, in a separate bowl, mix 3 quarters of a cup of sesame seeds together with 6 tablespoons each flour and cornstarch, 2 teaspoons of salt, and 1 teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder. Then, after donning on the most high-technology kitchen gloves at your disposal, just toss the chilies in and coat slash stuff those all by continuously pulling them from the bottom up. This slight twisting motion helps get some of the filling inside the chilies. Just do this move for about four minutes or so, or until most of the filling's gone and everything looks roughly like this. Then, get a wok of oil up to 130 centigrade and start to drop the chilies in. This will lower the temperature, which is fine because we're actually aiming to fry these at around 90 over a medium flame. How long this will take will depend on how fresh your dried chilies are. This frying process is a balancing act of getting the moisture to evaporate off while still not scalding the chilies. So when in doubt, be patient. You'll know the chilies are starting to get there once the frying oil is starting to inch up past 100 Celsius again. For our chili peppers here today, this took about 20 minutes. At this point, we like to let the oil temp continue to inch up, and then we'll take these out once everything's hit 130 once again, or after about another three minutes. Then just remove, drain, and once most of the oil's out, jiggle it all to get out some of the excess sesame. Reserve what's there, and spread the chilies out over a paper towel lined plate. Then with our chili sorted, now let's talk chicken. Now in Sichuan, or anywhere in China for that matter, people would obviously reach for finely chopped bone-in chicken for this sort of application. You can definitely go that route too if you want, but for this Xiang La Cui La Ziji, we wanted maximum snackability, so we went bone out. So this was just three legs and four thighs of bone-in skin-on chicken, then deboned and sliced into roughly one centimeter cubes. If you've got some stray skin, Definitely include it though, it's probably the best part of the dish. But in total, you're looking for about 1.25 kilos of chicken meat in all. Then, for the marinade, in Gulashan, what they seem to do is use a mix that's based off of ginger garlic water. So that's what we'll do as well. So in a mortar, four cloves of garlic, one inch of ginger, half teaspoon of salt, and then pound that all till pasty. Then toss in one teaspoon of citron pepper and a half teaspoon of fennel seed, and slightly crack those open with said pestle. Then top it with a quarter cup of hot boiled water, and let it sit until it cools down completely, or about 15 to 20 minutes. Then just give that a strain, squeeze out every last drop of the juice, and mix it with two tablespoons of Shaoxing wine, a teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder, a teaspoon of soy sauce, half teaspoon each white pepper and Sichuan pepper powders, an optional eighth teaspoon of garlic powder, and mix that in with your chicken, making sure it's absorbed one to two minutes. Then just coat it all with about two tablespoons of oil and set that aside. Then to deep fry. Again, we're going to be using that same chili frying oil from before. If it's your first fry with the stuff, the oil itself will be moderately spicy but it'll get increasingly so with each fry, so definitely save it after the batch. Either way, over a high flame, just get the oil up to about 150 Celsius, and then add the chicken in. With this quantity, it's gonna similarly dip the oil back below 100, which is fine and expected for this dish. It's going to feel like the chicken is crowding on you, and I guess it kinda is, but for a jerky-like end result, all you need is a bit of patience. After about 20 minutes, our oil is becoming clear looking once again, and the oil is starting to inch up past 100. Keep it going for about two more minutes, or until the oil has reached about 130 once again, and the chicken feels obviously hard when you pull a chopstick through it. Then drain, and set aside. Then last bit to prep, a bit of spice powder. We'll be including the predictable Sichuan peppercorn, three tablespoons worth, but also mixing in two teaspoons of fennel seed, which is a classic Guizhou chili crisp seasoning and seems to work pretty great here too. Just toast those over a medium low flame for about three minutes, 
or until a touch of the oil from the peppers just beginning to show. Then remove and grind those into a fine powder. Now then, for a stir fry, as always, first, long yao. Get your wok piping hot, shut off the heat, and this time add in about a third of a cup of that same chili slash chicken frying oil. Then, to make sure that this is properly spicy, toss in a bit of the spiciest dried chili that you can get your hands on. For us, this was five grams of a Sichuan millet chili. Over a low flame, just fry those until they're crispy, and then toss those in with your chili crisps. Then, with the flame still on low now, go in with a bit of aromatics. This here was three cloves of minced garlic, a half inch of minced ginger, and the white part of one scallion, and eight minced fresh bird's eye chili, totally optional, but why not? Fry those in the oil until they're just starting to get golden, about two minutes, then toss in a half tablespoon of Sichuan pepper and let that get fragrant. At this point, we'll color the oil with two tablespoons of a red fragrant chili powder. Kashmiri or gochugaru would work great here. Then once that's mixed, add in the chili and then up the flame to high. Then swirl in a bit of baijiu or Shaoxing wine, add in the chili chips and briefly stir fry again. Add in a small drizzle of dark Chinese vinegar, about one teaspoon. Then mix and swap the flame to low. Season with the spice mix from before and some seasoning up here on the screen, but do note that the MSG is in no way optional. Mix, then drizzle in a half tablespoon of toasted sesame oil together with a tablespoon half of Sichuan pepper oil and out. Sprinkle over a bit of toasted sesame seeds for the full Golashan look. And then this is good to devour. So as our 401 tradition, this is a real recipe, but the video is a little bit silly. So compared to our taco bao jian bing and uh, pineapple pizza bao, how does this chili chip la zi zi compare? So as you eat it, at first you may think, oh, it's spicy, but not that spicy. But as you eat it, it just builds up and your mouth is just on fire. However, the taste of it's really good. You just couldn't stop eating it. Personally, I may want it to be a little bit more like milder, maybe a little bit more comfortable to eat. But I guess enjoying it while hurting is kind of the point of this kind of lazuji. Nonetheless, great dish. I hope you can give it a try. So right, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon, and of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos. Here, our chief innovation officer. Come on. Oops, sorry. <laughs>